welcome back to another Saturday night smoke show, the live stream where we open up MREs live on a live stream. Kind of interactive. You guys can kind of put in your feedback. Obviously tonight I've got more than one option up, so that's uh, somewhat interactive I would say. I don't have any idea exactly what I'm going to do just yet. I, I know I'm going to start off opening a box from Salty Croc Collectibles. Now if you click on the description, it is full of all kinds of links to other MRE reviewers. Uh, there's also a link to Minotaur. Uh, the code OS10. If you get a Minotaur, use the code OS10. You get 10% off. That link's down there. But there's also a link to uh, tomorrow, the Ration Museum's live stream. I've already got that link posted in the description of this video right here. So you can uh, you can find that at any time if you want to come back and uh, check the re-upload of this. You know, once it's finished the live stream is over it uploads you can find the the link to that right there or you can type in ration museum and it will come up that way as well most likely i uh, can't guarantee it but uh you know what what i can do uh, is go into the chat right now oops of my own video and I can post a link as soon as it'll let me uh, there we go boom there we go there's the link to the uh, live stream for the ration museum tomorrow in the chat right now so what I've been doing is uh, if we can break the 30 viewer mark I'm gonna do a giveaway over there I'm holding to that uh, if we break 40 I'll, I'll do a second giveaway in the same live stream and if we break 50 I will give a third giveaway away in the same live stream uh, trying to generate some numbers over there that's not the only reason though I mean it, it's the live stream is or the ration museum is something that uh, that needs to be expanded tremendously so we've got a lot of work to do and uh, just trying to get I've got to get some regular videos out with some promotion for the for the ration museum in those as well that's part of the plan here as well the holiday season right now yeah uh i was actually i didn't know for sure that i was going to be home today i told you guys last week that i may be live streaming from new york city that still may be happening next saturday i'm not i'm not sure um i figure i'll probably end up going to new york towards the end of the week so yeah anyways i've got Three different meals up here. Now here's what I'm thinking. Um, hey, that's enough. Time out, guys. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> yeah, if, uh, if you're in here right now, if you don't mind, hit that thumbs up. That way it gets... It, the best thing you can do after this thing uploads is to come back and uh, click on the... up. Anyways, you can make a quick comment and Google will actually... That might help promote it, actually. But, you know, who knows? The way Google is, you just... You never know. Um, what happened to my live stream here? Anyways, you can make a quick comment and Google will... What? Okay. I have no idea what happened here. <laughs> God, sorry. Got distracted a little bit here with, uh... I don't know if that came up because of something I said. Tips for teachers power commenting in Google Docs power commenting it must have came up because of something I said about commenting on Google weird anyway all right let me get this box up here real quick and uh, we are going to open this box again this is from going to be from salty crock collectibles link to his eBay store he does have some MRE stuff for sale right now over there now let me go out here to um, Man, I'm bidding on this. Hang on. Let me show Sebastian, enough. 
Ethan, you're going to have to deal with Sebastian. So there is a Russian survival kit that's up right now. It looks to be fairly complete. I actually don't know what the full contents is supposed to be. But this is the most complete I've ever seen one. He's in here. You're going to have to feed him something, Ethan. Uh, it's it's <laughs> The price is way up there already. Uh, this should have a bunch of survival items in it. And uh, there might be a flask uh, uh. also inside of there that's the same shape as this but smaller. Because this looks to be fairly large. I can't really tell scale. <laughs> There's some cheap survival sunglasses or goggles I should say yeah here this might now oh, no maybe not this is also a kit that looks to have nine different items in it uh, oh Miss Marilyn yeah the gooey butter cake it is the holidays you guys need to go to Ann and Allen dot com that's Ann and Allen dot com I do not have a link to that in the description but it's very easy to find Ann and Allen dot com and uh, for all your gooey butter cake needs. They also sell coffee. And uh, I think that's pretty much it the last time I checked. But Miss Marilyn is right here in the chat. If you got any questions about that, she can tell you about it. And uh, I don't think I finished saying hit that thumbs up. But the best thing you can do is to come back to this video after it uploads and make a quick uh, one word comment. It doesn't matter. Just any comment at all would be extremely helpful for getting these live streams promoted. Uh, and also hitting that thumbs up or down, either way, letting Google get your feedback because they, they sure do love that information. Any, in, any information that you give them, what you like something, you dislike something, they eat it up. <clears throat> of course, you guys have probably been keeping up with the, uh, the big tech talks in the Senate and stuff like that. Some pretty interesting things happening. Um, actually, I think it's just a lot of talk. Unfortunately, I wish they'd do something, but they're probably not going to. Ted Cruz is uh, usually the main voice on speaking about that. Now, he did help out Steven Crowder, I do believe, um, last year, I think. Well, it might have been the beginning of this year. Uh, so, so at some point, got him remonetized. I think that's why. I mean, they're not going to say that, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Anyways, this thing is up to $385.26 shipping. Is it in Russia? No, it's in Pennsylvania. Whoa. Weird. Who is selling this? Top Gun Military. Top Gun Military. Let me see what else this guy's got real quick. Uh, I, I'm i debating on bidding on this thing. Original ballistic helmet with cover. NVG mount. Large initial. Okay. It's got a bunch of military clothes. I don't see any rations. That's what I'm looking for. See if he's got any. Oh, yeah, there's a canteen. Oh, yeah, I'm wrong. He does have rations up here for sale. Um, and I'm going to bid on it right now. But uh, I, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think? You guys think I should try to bid on this thing and win it? Three hundred eighty-five dollars. That's a lot of money. This is a four hundred dollar bid. Four hundred four hundred ten dollars plus tax. We're looking at a good four forty, four thirty, four forty right now. You got six minutes and forty seven seconds left to decide. So that's enough time to get into this box from Vince or Salty Croc Collectibles. Again, link to him in the description, guys. Uh, I asked Art. Art and Nina, if they had anything going on, they wanted me to pass along to you guys. I'll have to check my messages in a minute and see what they got going on. I know they got they got some decent rations in over there. It looked like they had some uh, their DAF rations. I'm not sure even where those things come from. I know they're they're, they're a civilian uh, a civilian ration that's kind of that is similar to the military ration. I can't remember what country they're from though. Man, oh man, I don't know what I should do here. That's a lot of money. God, that's so much money. And what am I going to do with this thing, really? Yeah, you're, yeah. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I'm talking myself out of it. What am I going to, I mean, seriously, what am I going to do with that thing? All right. Here we go. Wait a minute. 
drums, please. Here we go. What? It, how do I? Okay. Can't get the flap because the MREs are in the way. Uh, turn it. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. It's a good view inside the box. I thought he said he got he, here. I didn't think there was rations inside this box or. Uh, I would have just planned on eating something out of this box, probably. So, wow. Look at that. Huh. I don't know where to start. I guess we'll start right here on the end with a ham slice. Sweet. Ooh, this is a 98. I was going to guess around that time. 98, 97, 99 maybe. 99, ham slice was still around. I can't remember if it was around in 2000 and 2001 or not. I have to check the menus list, but this is going to be awesome. So I'm going to guess he probably doesn't know the conditions. What do we have here? Whoa! That is cool. Wow. I've never seen one like this. Look at this. The story. The U.S. military needed an energy bar for the American soldier. So it created the Hua bar to give a burst of steady energy and alertness without the crash. The word, the battle cry Hua, is a cornerstone of military culture. Soldiers shout it out as they jump out of helicopters, storm beaches, and free fall behind enemy lines. It means anything and everything except no. The Hua, or it says Hua, is a federally registered trademark belonging to the U.S. Army. Huh. How about that? I've had Hua bars from early on, but I've never seen one in a silver package like this. And to be honest, I probably threw the packaging away from the one that I opened and ate. I've had, I think I've eaten two of these. And they do come in the, uh, around the 97, 98, 99 era, I do believe. It's like nine grams of fat. How much protein's in here? Is what I'm, I was curious about. Ten grams of protein. Wow, twenty percent of your daily value. That's pretty daggone good for for a one bar. And then this is chocolate crisp. Man, I want I want to find a date. Sorry, guys. I know it's weird. I'm getting fascinated by it by a bar, but uh, hey, it is what it is. Okay, there's a Best Buy. Hang on, I'm gonna have to. There we go. 32307. Best Buy date. So this is probably, I would assume, definitely from 2006, maybe even 2005. Would they put longer than a one year shelf life on this? I would think they probably would. This could go back to 04, I guess. But, uh, I don't know. Created by the U.S. On I wonder if they, uh, they sold these on the civilian market when they first, first came out with them. Kind of seems that way since they have right here created by the U.S. military. But that will not be opened. That will stay on the shelf. I am uh, eventually, one of these days, going to make a uh, video about chocolate bars. And I do have some unique chocolate bars that I only have one of. And I will probably only ever be able to get one of. Uh, I have a 2-ounce Red Hershey's Tropical Chocolate Bar from 1942 that Steve sent me, and it is in absolutely perfect condition from one of the lifeboat and life raft rations that he opened probably two to three years ago. I would say two years ago. Actually, maybe, no, no, no. Maybe about a year, year and a half ago. It's like, I think it's one of the last boxes he sent me. I opened it here on the live stream. Cool stuff, though. Well, Salty Croc Collectibles might have saved me from eating, uh, an MRE star MRE tonight, but I did get other MREs out just because I didn't know that I'd want to eat an MRE star MRE. I'm not knocking them, I'm just maybe I am a little bit. What is this? Meal ready to eat individual developed for the United Arab Emirates. What? This is one of those things that uh, that Shocker had. Shocker picked up one of these when he was in Vegas and he was going to send me one. Wow, look at this. Okay. Oh, this is going to... Wait. Okay, with rice. Is it separate rice? If the rice is with it, it's not going to be your uh, chicken 
and feta, I think is what the Mediterranean chicken, Mediterranean style chicken is, is the chicken with feta. Uh, but this says with rice, so I wonder, I mean, there's two boxes there, and one of them is smaller than the other, so it could be the rice. But that is super cool. Who made this? Does it say? Now this actually, this deserves a proper review. I don't know what else is in there. Uh, Shocker did a review of one of these over on his channel. Look at that hot beverage bag. I don't think ours are all labeled like that, are they? Or maybe that's not long ways. Maybe it is just on the top of the bag. I was thinking it was running down sideways on the bag. But it tells you everything that's in here. Uh, there's the hummus. It's got some dates in there, some nuts, some crackers, some chocolate candies, a fruit bar, the accessory package, your ration heater, your spoon, your hot beverage bag. So everything below the fruit bar oh, is uh, not food items. Dang, that's cool, man. Man, Vince, you uh, you hooked it up here, man. Oh, look at this. I know exactly what this is. <laughs> this did come out of around a 90... I would say a 90... This might have came out of a 98 or a 99. Whoa, there's History Savior. Can't stay filming, uh, filming in New Orleans. We'll eat some seafood for you. Oh, man, I would love to have some nice, fresh... Uh, what is it called... What's it called whenever you put like a bunch of crawfish and like whole potatoes, whole onions, and stuff like that into a uh, great big pot and cook it all up? What's that called, man? Anybody want to chime in and tell me what that is? But thank you so much for that uh, super chat there, History Savior. There better be a, uh, a link to History Savior in my description. If there's not, he's very easy to find. History Savior 1941. Type it in in your search bar. Uh, Landel says, I'm here. I'm not feeling uh, too social tonight. But Menu 5 Mediterranean Chicken was my favorite. I don't know that I've ever had just one labeled Mediterranean Chicken. I have had the chicken with feta. And I loved the chicken with feta. Man, look at that thing. It's pretty rough looking. But, uh, yeah, these things right here. Made by Snickers. A munch bar perfect for display absolutely perfect now i saw this and i was like no way what is that look at that odd looking thing what the heck i gotta say i've never seen one like this vince you're blowing my mind here this is an 8008 so this would be a 98 this came out of i'll bet you this came out of a 98 ration same as this ham slice over here i've never seen a granola bar come like that i have seen them obviously come like here i've i got this out to eat last week and i forgot about it but i will be eating it this week okay everybody says gumbo okay or a crawfish boil maybe it was a crawfish i don't know i worked with this guy named lance back in the day he was from louisiana and he he had that that southern twang i guess you'd call it he he just sounded like a guy from you know, the, the French Quarter. He had that French, I guarantee, type of accent. And he cooked us this uh, crawfish boil or whatever it was. I can't, there was more than just crawfish in it, though. I can't remember what else was in there. But I remember eating those whole potatoes and it was so spicy, but God, it was so good. And he had his own sauce that he'd had in his family for over a hundred years that they made, that he made by hand. And it was just, God, it was so good. Uh, but this is what I'm used to right here. Like, I, this may be out of a food packet survival general purpose. I can't remember where I got this. But I haven't had a cornflakes bar in a long time. And I love the granola bars. The granola bars are awesome. But I got to say, the shortcakes probably, I mean, that that's up there. Might be one of the best because they're nice and buttery and just yummy. But, man, that thing is, this is, this feels larger than the way I remember it. it. This almost feels like there's a... I don't know. There may not be one of these in here. I mean, they're similar in size, I gotta say. Very similar. But this is longer. I don't know. That's super cool. I love it. This is some good stuff, man. 
Oh, look at that. Got a Mountain House ice cream sandwich. <laughs> okay, Chris Stiber says it's just called a boil. Okay. With crawfish, uh, crawfish boil with crab, low country boil. Okay. Not a lot, it's fun. I'll re later. Much love, everybody, and talk soon. Well, thank you, History Savior. Thank you for stopping in, man. We appreciate you. And thanks again for that super chat that's not popping up on my screen for some reason. Let me go to. Yeah. Yeah, it's not coming up. Weird. And I was way back in the chat. I was reading down through, and now. I'll... Yeah, crawfish, andouille sausage. Yes, it had andouille sausage in it. Yes, the red potatoes, corn, yes. Shrimp, that's what it was. That's what I was trying to remember. It had shrimp in it. Yeah, golly, man, that was so good. And I've never had it since. That was, huh, that would have been back probably around the year 2000 to 2002, roughly right along in there or maybe it was around 2003 so what 17 years ago I, man oh man how time flies what do we have here ah this is the 12 b which is the chicken loaf you didn't always get this one um uh, sometimes it'd be a different menu 12a which i can't remember was it uh I don't want to say. Can't remember what 12A is. But yeah, this is 12B. First generation MRE. Who's this? Oh, Southern Packaging and Storage Company. It's got accessory packet C in it. That's That'll be good. That should have a, uh, a different drink mix in it, I do believe. It should have like a tea in it probably or something like that. Or it might have candy in it. That's probably what it is. Uh, let's go here. Wait, what's this? No way. Wow, look at that. That is amazing. So, any of you guys who actually watched Eating History, you would have seen this on the show. We had the, uh, I think the, we had the cherry flavor. I think. Or maybe it was strawberry. But anyways, the Cosmic Candy. So, this is actually the byproduct of what's left over from Pop Rocks. But it wasn't called Pop Rocks back then. It was called some... I can't remember right now. But the Cosmic Candy used to be called Stardust. And they got all kinds of crazy parents thinking that it was a drug. And they, they, they started a hotline. Let's see if the... The information's not on the back of this yet. So they started a hotline for parents to call into so that they could explain it to them. Or there was probably a pre-recorded message that told them that uh, <laughs> that it wasn't drugs, it was candy. That Stardust was uh, <laughs> uh, for their children to eat. And there was also, I think they started that because of the rumor that children's stomachs could blow up from uh, drinking a... a it was either like a Coca-Cola or a 7-Up, I can't remember which, and eating the candy at the same time. What do we have here? Ooh, this is a Coca-Cola that goes right along, I do believe, with this cosmic candy. <laughs> this is a 75th anniversary, which would put it at, what, uh, 1977? Wow, look at that. Bottled under the authority of Coca-Cola Atlanta, Georgia. This is a commemorative bottle. What is going on right there? What is that? I can't tell what... That's weird. Anybody want to chime in and tell me what this uh, symbol here is? Because I'm not familiar with that. Different regions, different names. Oh, we're probably still talking about the gumbo and stuff. You have the angry cops talking about the girl on TikTok, talking about the military. Nope, haven't seen it. It's a more J. Oh, I didn't bid on the Russia thing. I forgot about it, the Russian survival kit. That was actually a pilot backslash cosmonaut kit. Um, I've seen them separated on eBay for years pop up, but I've never seen a, what looks to be a complete kit. 
like that one was. Okay, let's go here. Sands Revival, or Rival, Sands Rival, established in 1905, whoa there's CT, yo yo yo, what's up, what is up my people, <laughs> what is going on man, hello CT, well thanks for stopping in dude, and thank you for the super chat, definitely a link to CT's channel in my description, you guys better go check out his channel, Mr. Trucker, with his pizza reviews, driving around in his big old truck and eating, uh, IMPs and MREs and all kinds of rations. Definitely worth checking out. Sands Rival without competition. What? What does that say right there? Aura? Product of Greece. Produced by... I'm not familiar with this. What is this? I mean, obviously, it's some kind of alcohol, right? See how fast the bubbles go away? It doesn't look like... Uh, it's very high on the uh, alcohol content. The bubbles are hanging around. Uh, gold. Gold prized in all. Wait a minute. Especially. What? World Exposition of San Francisco in 1915. No idea what the... I assume this is alcohol, right, guys? It doesn't say how much alcohol is in it or anything like that. Maybe a fry wine? Huh? But it's... That's a cool, cool little bottle. Look at the lid on that thing. What's up with that? I've never seen one like that. Looks like that metal peels off of there. Maybe it is like a... I mean, that's like to, I don't know. Looking at it, I mean, you know what I mean? Like maybe to make it spread out. It's O-U-Z-O? Oh, okay. Well, that's, okay. Well, you guys will have to explain. Licorice flavored liquor, really? Huh. I'll be daggone. Wait a minute, here we go. Well, no, it just says it's 45 grains. 46 GL. What do we have over here? Uh, that looks Russian. That's Russian, right? Well, focus. Is this Russian? It is. Does that mean it's 45 proof? <laughs> okay. Sean says drink it. Okay. I, that, I, yeah, I may do that. Let's keep going here. I get caught up. North Carolina possum. Sun dried. You gotta be kidding me. What? Elrod. Is it really possum? Contains pure possum. Nuh uh. Excuse me. Killed by. Carload, killed by a carload of fun-loving tourists on Highway 19 in Cherokee, North Carolina. Guaranteed sun cured for one day. <laughs> no way. It's still... It's Whatever it is, it's still liquidy. Is this like potted meat or something? Surely it's not possum. Look at that. Great Smokies Gift Cher Gifts Cherokee. It was a dollar ninety-eight. Man, I wish I could see that date code if that is one underneath there. Nothing on here is really telling me how old this would be. Serving suggestions: Serve on a cracker. Goes best with sweet potatoes, Pepsi, and a moon pie. I've actually got a box of moon pies in there that I just picked up. So, Engel Enterprises, 212 Walker. Oh, there we go. Boom, 1989. There's the date. Yeah, it probably is. And then again, it could be possum meat. You never know. 
they'd, I don't know how many hoops they'd have to jump through to make sure that possum meat was safe to eat. I don't know. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe you can just eat a possum. I don't know. This is another bottle of something. Eight treat beverages. Eight fluid ounces. Honey back. What? Eight. It's, yeah, I have no clue what kind of beverage this is. Wait, wait, wait. No. Okay. Huh. Like a cream soda, maybe? Does the lid tell us? No, it's ginger ale. Okay. Naturally flavored ginger ale from A Treat. Have a treat. That's awesome. This is awesome stuff, dude. Way too generous, I can tell you that. All you got, I'm, anybody who sends something in, it's like, God, you guys are too nice. Is this coffee? This looks very familiar. Oh, this is instant tea. Wow. Oh, I think it's still got a seal underneath it here, it feels like. Let's find out. Yep, no, yep. Is that just part of the underneath of this lid? I don't want to pop it off of there if it... Nope, I think it's actually sealed. That means this could actually still be good. Let's see if we can find a date real quick. You can make iced tea with it. Or you can have hot tea with it, obviously. One level teaspoon of missing tea in a, what, eight ounces of water. Put two level teaspoons in it for a quart. It's got maltodextrin in it. Three ounces net weight of this stuff. Made by McCormick. I'm going to guess that this is probably 70s. Judging by the look. Could be early 80s. But it could also be older than that. I could be off. I'm just taking a guess here. Let me see here. I do not see a barcode on it anywhere. It's very possible that it could predate the barcode. But it also could just not have one. It could be around that era of the 70s. So probably 70s. Wow. Some instant tea from the 70s. And it looks fine. Look at that. Uh, it's got a little bit of discoloration maybe right there. Maybe that's printing. Oh, no, that's on the jar. That's on the jar. So, yeah, that looks like it might be fine. Dude, that's awesome. Got one more can buried in here, I do believe. Yep, right here. Let's see what this is. Oh. Oh. Good old cheese spread. From the Booth Fruit Company. This is from 1960. This is an old one. This is out of one of the old MCIs. Right after they switched over from the key. Being on the bottom of these. I think 1958 they still had the key. And 59 also. Could be wrong about that. But man that's. It's obviously. The cheese spread is obviously opened up. Because it is bloated. But it's not super bloated. So there may be some tasteable cheese in this can. Now, it's, I don't know if Salty Crock Collectibles is in the chat, but I will text him here in a moment and ask him if he wants me to open this and see if I can try the cheese. But I got to say, guys, that was, a, that was an awesome box. The box Sean sent in last week was amazing. And I have three boxes that I have to open up. Um... A different week. It will, probably won't be next weekend because obviously I'm not going to take them to New York with me. But I've got three boxes from uh, from Gabriella that uh, that I have to open up as well. And those are plum full, so it'll take me it'll take me every bit of thirty minutes to get through those as well. Man, th this is not going back in there. I don't want it to get damaged. This is going right up on the shelf because it's going in the glass case. The Cosmic Candy, the uh, Hoo -Ah Bar, and the Munch Bar is also going to go into uh, the glass case. Yes, sir. They absolutely deserve it. 
go. Uh, did I wrap everything? Pretty much. All except for the little bottle here. I will leave that sitting over here on the side on standby. Oh, I should have been putting that stuff over here like that. And this was back here like this, if I remember right. Yep, like that. Sticky note back to the back. Yeah, I didn't plan on the uh, on him sending anything. Like it didn't say, when he told me he was sending a box. It didn't sound. Oh, those are going in the shelf. It didn't sound like he was sending anything that would uh, be an MRE or anything that could I could use on a live stream. So there we go. That granola bark. I almost wonder if that's not like a. It's got, it's got a weird looking texture to it too. I'll bet you it's not one of the compressed granola bars. Whoa. It's always fun watching Smokey dig through his boxes. <laughs> boxers, I mean boxes. Uh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> I got the joke there. Thank you uh, for that super chat, Dan. Man, oh man. Or cyanide cookies, I should say. You guys, again, too generous. And that's the first super chat that's actually popped up that, uh, like, that I've actually... That, that's popped up like I've actually gotten it. So, going back and checking here. Huh. Oh, and I got a super chat from a land one. I didn't even realize it. it, it I, I glazed right over it. A land one, I'm sorry about that, my dude. Uh, when he told me that it was uh, O-U-Z-O. And I think I was... I can't even remember what I was saying, though. Whew. All right. So, I got this out as kind of like a major backup. I, don't, I doubt I'll need it, because I'm not. I'm just not in the mood for that tonight. So, again, huge thanks to Salty Croc Collectibles. Thanks to everybody who sent in a super chat. Sorry I missed your super chat, Alando. I totally brain farted over that one, I guess. <laughs> totally my fault. And then uh, Dan just came in with the, the, or Cyanide Cookies came in with that one there. All right, back to the live chat. Okay. So, yeah, usually CT's got a video out tonight. I see Ruby Czar Hill, a.k.a. Dragonfly, just commented asking if CT was going to post a uh, video tonight. And uh, usually he posts a video that you guys can go check out the videos, usually before my live stream and give you something to watch. Um, I noticed Dub C looks like he's posting pretty consistently on, on Saturdays. So, you guys, there's another ration video review usually you can go and watch uh, over on dub c's channel should be a link to dub c stuff down in my description as well now the reason that i even got this out first of all is vince actually or salty crop collectibles actually gave this to me uh it's been about a year and a half ago at the at the meetup in kentucky he gave me this one and another one another uh MRE star MRE and I know this is going to sound crazy but I've actually never eaten an entire MRE star I don't even think I've ever opened an MRE star MRE I've had plenty of MRE star components I've had mains I've had sides I've had crackers I've had corn nuts I, you know all that stuff because a lot of that stuff Bob was using in his rations for a long time and that's like I ate all all types of MRE star stuff in there. Now I know kind of what we're all thinking here with this and I, I kind of wanted to just open it up and see what's in there. Now you'll see a lot of like novice YouTubers that want to do the, the MRE review. They'll end up buying these and trying to play them off as authentic MREs and uh, it's because they don't know any better. That because it says right there for military, civilian, and emergency preparedness but um, no, <laughs> definitely not a military MRE. Now, the military will, or I should not military, but the government will buy these from MRE Star and give them out in a lot of disaster areas, or you know, if they've had uh, if they've had a flood, or you know, stuff like that. That's they will purchase these and give them away. 
instead of giving away full-blown military MREs, I think because they're more expensive, I'd say these are geared more towards civilians, so it's a little bit lower probably in sodium and cholesterol. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But, first thing I notice when I pick this up is it's very light. Like there's, it's, I mean, it's not super thin. The other one was actually thinner than this. Uh, and this is beef stew, so I thought, man, maybe I'll eat the beef stew. I probably won't even eat this because I, I know this is going to be awesome, whatever's in here. This is probably what I'm going to eat. MRE Nation, there's nothing on their website anymore, but uh, I do know that any any meals that I have from MRE Star are freaking awesome. Uh, but that's where you get into Minotaur. Minotaur, the meals over there, same, same, coming from the same place, all they they've been awesome. I mean, I'm not pushing them, but they're they've been good. So let's see, let's see what's in this MRE Star MRE. See if this peelable seal works very well here. Oh, yeah, nice. It didn't rip the bag. That's kind of nice. All right, let's see here. There we go. That should be that's everything out of the bag. What do we got here? Ooh, oatmeal cookies. We have oh nut and raisin mix. Okay. We have a pink lemonade flavored drink mix. We have the standard MRE Star accessory packet. I think I have about two, three hundred of those things saved up. No joke. Here we have our crackers, which are pretty much the same thing as the military crackers. Here we have a oh, a U.S. military flameless ration heater. I didn't expect to see that in there. This looks like a is this a 2018? Really? Wow, that's way fresher than I thought there would be. Huh. Here's a five-digit date code. 18355. That's, there's no way. There's no way. Because, wait. What year was that? Was it 2019? Maybe. When did we have the meetup in Kentucky? Was it 2018 or 2019? I can't even remember. I don't know why I was thinking it was 2018. It must have been 2019. So yeah, maybe this is this this obviously is a 2018. One eight the 355 days. So uh, Vince or Salty Crock Collectibles gave this to me when it was only about seven months old. I'll be that going. Super mega fresh. But as you can see. You get crackers, nothing to put on them, so that you eat your crackers with your main. It's pretty much your only option there, right? And this is beef stew, by the way, with carrots and peas. With potatoes, carrots, and peas. Huh. Potatoes, carrots, and peas, huh? I've never had the... What does it say? Do not heat pouch in the microwave? Oh, yeah, of course. But... I've never had the MRE Star beef stew that I can remember. I'm not going to say for sure I haven't, but I don't think I have. I just said I hadn't, but I'm pretty sure I haven't. And then you get your cookies as your dessert. You get a snack of nut and raisin mix. And then you also get, there's your cold, and you also get a coffee in here. So it's not horrible, right? Like this isn't, this isn't bad, especially for a civilian meal. Uh, I don't know what they got going on prices wise anymore. I'm trying to think. It's probably they're probably charging ten bucks a meal, which I think is kind of high for what that is. Yep, manufacturers uh, 18, the 283rd day of 2018. Wow, yeah, this stuff is stu super, super, super. Yep, pretty fresh, <laughs> super fresh. I'm not seeing a manufacturing date on those right off the bat. Um, yeah, that's not bad. It's not a bad meal. But I kind of figure you guys probably want to see, uh, you get a coffee type powder. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if you're talking about that, but yeah. You know how I feel about the, uh, deep rich coffee. Some, some people have come to like it and 
not give it too much crap, but uh, you know what? When they give you a package of coffee that will only make three to four ounces of coffee, what is that? That's not a cup of coffee. In my opinion, six ounces of coffee is not, a, you know, not enough. If I'm going to have a cup of coffee, I want an eight ounce cup of coffee. At least. Yeah, okay, that's vitamin C added to that. That's cool. The pink lemonade. Yum, yum. And a uh, nice, fresh, frameless light. Fram Man, I cannot talk. Flameless Rashon Heitor. All right, let's get this out of the way, too. Now, this is what I was kind of wanting to eat, so why not? It's fun to look into into the uh, the MRE Star meal, and I'll probably just eat that on my own time. But versus kind of the, the standard MRE Nation meals that you were getting, this is just a standard meal, I do believe, right? Mexican toy. So this thing has an inspection date of basically two months from now. Huh. It's a pretty good thing that I'm opening it up. Yeah, three ounces of coffee is disappointing. I agree, uh, Sean. The Ration Museum. Yeah, it, it's just not... It's just not enough. Corey Hanson, Old Smokey, and Steve are Emory legends to me. Oh, thanks, Corey. Appreciate you, man. I'm just a regular dude, though, that enjoys to share my meals with you guys and stuff, so... What is that? Is that a standard pack? Okay, yep. Standard pack number three. Contains cheese spread with jalapenos. A cheese spread. Trans fat free cornbread. Crackers. Fruit punch drink mix. Hot beverage bag. Nice. Oh yeah, by the way, let me get plugged in here. I'm going to go. Battery's going to go down on me, guys. All right. Yeah, the inspection date is. Uh, I'm sorry. I should have. I, I don't explain things like that typically in live streams because most people that are stopping in and whatnot in here know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, inspection date is literally. It's it's literally to inspect to make sure that no mice have gotten to them. Usually, um, no water gotten to them and they've gotten any mold on them or anything like that make sure there's no pinholes in the bags things of that nature because as long as you've stored them properly that's all you need to do is inspect them to make sure that they're still looking okay and then you can leave them alone unless you need them obviously well let's see what else is in this bad boy we got uh oh look at that we got one of those uh funky flameless ration heaters that works really really well can't remember what these were out of they got that Arabic writing on them. Anybody know what these are out of? You can uh, chime in and let me know because I cannot remember. What is it? Sorry, Smokey's still trying to learn everything. That's it's it's all good. Yeah, no. If you got a question, that's what these live streams are for, man. I get to answer them live. If I if I know the answer, if I don't, <laughs> I'll say I don't know. Uh, there's one of those one of those kits. Same thing. There. No, nope, that's got a. What is that? What is that? Oh, it's got a, this has got a hot sauce in it. I like these little hot sauces actually too. New Orleans style hot sauce. There's no coffee in. Yeah, there is coffee in that. This is coffee with the hot sauce. That's good. That's one of their good. Um, yep, accessory kits. And we got us a hot beverage bag in there. I won't be using that at all. Let's see what else we got in here. We have black beans and sauce. It's got a 2018 date on it. So using standard military inspection dates on there. We got a Mexican style chicken stew. Love this stuff. And we got an apple cinnamon flavor first strike nutritious energy bar. Not a fan. And we have a cinnamon bun. Nice. All right. That's everything out of there. Again, like the, this, this contains a lot of your food. 
But uh, let me go throw these in some hot water, and I will be back. flipped over here white lights there we go oh man sorry my back is killing me oh. all right get the old tray out here Move some of this stuff over I guess what I could do is mix and match a little bit with this uh this MRE star stuff up here. We can do uh, to check out some fresh oatmeal cookies and uh, the nut and raisin mix. Why not? Let me check that out. I don't want that. I'm not a fan of them. Sorry, guys. It's not like I'm going through a standard military ration. The contents are the contents, and that's the contents. You got to eat the contents of that meal. <laughs> I can mix and match on this one. I did open two MREs, you know. All right. Let's, uh, let's get this bad boy opened up. Let's check the chat real quick. Corey never had an MRE or an IMP yet. Uh, well, you're in for... Uh, some super high in sodium and fattening food <laughs> when you do. <laughs> There's some good stuff in there, though, man. It's just like, uh, if you. One thing I would suggest is not looking up what the contents of whatever it is you're going to have are. That way you can be surprised by what's in the bag, you know? Uh, it's kind of like opening up a Christmas gift. It's all, you know, it's all a surprise. I had no idea what was going to be in either one of those. So it's fun to open them up and look at them. I don't know. I don't. I probably shouldn't leave these set here. I don't want them to get something on them. So let me uh, move the hoo-ha. Hoorah, bar. Hoorah. You can only say that one way. You got to say it. Hoorah. Or you, it just doesn't sound like say. Let me move the hoorah bar back over here out of the way. <laughs> and, no, you got You got to really say it. Say it from your gut. Say it from your chest, boy. All right. Here we go. There is our basic packs that have basic pack. Got our cheese spread. Well, that's jalapeno cheese spread. There's our regular cheese spread. Now I meant to message. Let me uh let me see if I can hit up Salty. Where's he at? Did I not message him earlier? Come on. Sorry, I to text you. Okay, we'll see if he responds. For some reason, sometimes when people text me, or they, uh, I, 
uh, I text them. I don't have the I don't have them muted or anything. I don't think. Let me hang on. Nope. Huh. Weird. That's like RC Gusto. Like he he never pops up in my list. It's it's super weird because I I typically will text him say hey, I'm going to go live tonight or whatever. And uh, his number has always disappeared out of my text list. So, yeah, that sucks. Oh, here we have a uh, fruit punch drink mix. Oh, yeah, let's get out the pink lemonade. I like the pink lemonade. Let me get that, let me get that sucker out of here real quick. If I can find it. There it is. Punch can go over here. There's our cornbread. Trans fat free cornbread. And here are our crackers that are going to be those super weird crackers that are stuck to the package. So, guess what I'm going to do? I'm not going to eat those. I'm going to get out the MRE Star crackers. And I'm going to put these crackers over in the MR, MRE Star bag. Cool. So, nice mix of stuff going on here. And I'll put this flameless ration heater in here as well. Because that is one super awesome. Can anybody tell me where this flameless ration heater came out of? I cannot remember what these were in. What ration those came out of. They're not in the Chileans, are they? They might be. Alright. Probably need to go get... And there's the good beverage bag with the uh, gusseted bottom. I do believe those are still the ones that they have at Minotaur. And I'll open that accessory packet in a second. Early. What is it? Who cares? Eat what you want. Sunshine. Sun and British 12-hour rations. Are you sure? I don't think that's the only place those came from. I mean, I, I do think that you're right. They were in those as well. But I don't think that's originally where they came from. Go grab those mains real quick. I'm pretty sure they're probably warm enough. Oh, deep breath. All right, there's our mains that aren't going to be able to sit there. I'll put them on that cheese. Ain't going to hurt that cheese, I don't think. guys the 
you guys hear what some of the uh, vaccines in Australia were making people uh, supposedly false positive for HIV? Uh, the reason I even said anything about that is because someone just texted me that they were up to get it. Yeah, if I have strength and linked to COVID back in the early days, but panic stories buried that news. Corey says, I had no idea about that. But I do know what the... I think they had seven last I knew. And they stopped the, the use of the, the vaccine that they were using over there in Australia. Let me, uh, let me go back in these texts. I, I need to check for... Uh, Salty, which uh, looks like he hasn't gotten back with me. Um, okay, now, oops. Thanks for texting me back, Sean. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, where's their cup at here? So, just looking at my text they said they they got lots of daft rations on the website cases of first strike rations for 145 cent or 145 dollars a case with free shipping with inspection dates of 2022 so that puts them at uh 2019 production dates that's pretty daggone fresh i must say go on cat yeah go all right let's get this uh, little tiny cup of coffee going here Look in this accessory packet real quick. Dump it out here. We're going to need all that stuff. We're going to need that. That is not a butt ration. That is only a napkin. And there's our little hot sauce. That Okay. Uh, looks like we got non-dairy creamer, sugar. Here's our coffee. Got a wet wipe. Got salt and pepper nice got our little thing of smarties which is good and got a nice little spoon there let's get some coffee going here that is not going to be deep or rich in my personal opinion get it all out of there that I can Sugar. And the cream. But yeah, I mean, that's that's not, not horrible if you guys are looking for some four, uh, first strike rations. Those come nine to a case. Minis one through nine. Uh, that's nine 24-hour rations for 145 bucks. What's that put it at? Uh, 20 bucks a ration would be 180 bucks. So it's less than that. Uh, it's a little bit more than 15 a ration, because that would give you 10 rations at $145. Yeah, be, yeah, $14.50 at 10 rations. So, I don't know, something like that. Be like, uh, how much would that be? About 18, 17, 18 bucks a piece, something like that. 17.50. That's not bad. Free shipping. Uh, I think I missed a super chat, by the way. I remember looking and seeing it. Ah, Jacob Hallenberger says, Jealous of that jalapeno cheese, man. <laughs> uh, that's nothing to be jealous over, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the, the jalapeno cheese is awesome. Like, literally, that's what I should put in there. That's like three, four, maybe four ounces. Yep. That's all I'm putting in it. We'll see if that does the trick. I'm making making it a 
halfway okay cup of coffee there. Next. What do I got to do next? Oh, drink mix. That's right. Let's go with the Superman cup here. Good old pink lemonade. Mm, I'm gonna try this a little bit of this on my hand here. Getting to be a habit for me to do this. Mmm. Ooh. Mmm. Yeah, that tastes like candy. Get that lemon sourness and uh, sweetness of whatever the pink part is. I don't know what really... What makes pink lemonade pink? Anybody want to uh, chime in and tell me what, what makes pink lemonade pink? Because I don't know. Oh, how much water is that supposed to take? I bet it ain't supposed to take that much. Uh, let's see here. 12 ounces? Really? Nice. Okay. Cool. It's got a really nice salmon color to it. Oops. Give it a quick stir. Goes back to rearranging. Gotta have the, 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 the grapefruit does really. I didn't know that. CT just says food coloring question mark. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, obviously, uh, pink lemonade does taste slightly different from uh, regular lemonade. So there's got to be something there, flavor-wise. I would think. Golly, I'm stopped up too. Whew. What is next? Uh, I think I got drinks are good to go. Let's get this stuff opened up. Let's uh, uh here's your wow, nut and raisin mix. It's uh, more raisins than I want in one bite, but. There we go. Looks like sunflowers, peanuts, almonds, and raisins down the hatch. Mm. That's actually not a bad mix right there. Kind of like that. Huh. Some oatmeal cookies. Two of those out of there. Wish I had some uh, Minotaur icing on me right now. I'd uh, add some of that in. Let's get these MRE Star crackers out of here. Yeah, I had no idea these were so fresh, the MRE Star stuff. Oh, yeah. Nice little rush of air going up in there. 
Whoa, hang on, these are broke. Okay, not bad. Not bad. I can get down with that. Here we have our cornbread. Which I guess uh, it's going to go with the uh, Mexican style chicken stew. I would have preferred to have some rice myself. Didn't get any. Got black beans instead. Mmm. Nice corny smelling uh, sweet cake. I gotta get a bite of that right now. It is <laughs> making my mouth water. Mmm. Yeah, that hit the spot. Mmm. Can't waste that. Gotta eat that too. I mean, that is... For a shelf-stable cornbread, they they done a good job with that. I gotta say. Definitely impressed. So I'm not gonna open that long way so I can dump it out here. Get that started there. There we go. Mm. Again, I have not eaten anything at all today in preparation for this. Mmm, golly, those smell good. <laughs> yes, they do. I don't really see these mixing well with the uh, Mexican style chicken stew, but hey, whatever what came with it but I don't know all right we got the Mexican style chicken stew. Whoop. This is a good looking dish, I'll tell you. Very stew like. It's rather runny, but it is super hot too. Eating this stuff on the cold side, which a lot of guys have to do, okay? That's a common practice. Eating these at room temperature or outside temperature or whatever, you know, try to leave them lay out in the sun for an hour before you got to eat or whatever. <clears throat> it's definitely not ideal. It makes them taste ten times better. And I don't think I'm exaggerating. It makes them taste ten times better eating them heated up. That is no joke. So the Mexican style chicken stew, you got corn in there, you got green peppers, chicken, you got a, a tomato based stew that it uh, that it's in, all encapsulated in, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> kind of has a, what's that smell? Kind of smells like beans I know it sounds weird because I don't even think there is any beans in it but it smells like beans it's got some look at that big old chunk of tomato right there wow all right I'm going for this main first some chicken some pepper some corn down the hatch hmm That is uh, mite tasty. Very good. Mm. 
the corn still has kind of a pop to it. And you get that, you, you, all, you get a little burst of flavor from that. The main flavors, I would say, coming through, there's a little bit of onion in there. In that, uh, I would say, in, ingrained in that stew. The tomato is a, is a major player here. The chicken's nice. Uh, I don't pick up much of the, the green pepper. A little bit of chili in there. Uh, chili pepper, I would say. Really good stuff right there, though. Absolutely wonderful. I'm going for the beans next. Black beans and sauce. Mm. Mm. So those are um, those are like a chili without meat, kind of, kind of like a chili bean. You got some uh, some chili seeds up in there, or some pepper seeds up in there. I think this will probably mix all right with the cracker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. The beans need the cracker if you're just going to eat them on their own. But, let's see what the Mexican-style chicken stew here, with a little bit of the beans added in, let's see how they mix together. Mm. Wow. That becomes some really rich, flavorful, chili-like dish, I would say. <laughs> Mixing the two. That, that's, I'm down with that. I like that. Try a little bit with the, uh, the cornbread here. Mixing it all together. Mm. I gotta say, it does all seem to mix well together. That cornbread is very, very strong in flavor. Yeah, if I had some rice, a chipotle tortilla would be nice. But uh, without the rice, it's just it's too too runny, and it would just run right out of the right out of the tortilla, more or less. But the uh, the beans mix very well with this main. I gotta say, I'm not uh, not knocking that at all, not at all. Some big old chunks. Now that chicken's a little fatty for my. Uh, for my personal palate, it's kind of—it's got a little bit of a. You know, that's a—that's a nice piece right there. It's a little gelatinous, and uh, but as you can see, that's just real chunks of chicken. Nice and shredding there. It's—it's it's good. Good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Get a nice big bite of that. Sorry for the uh, silence, but uh, <laughs> I don't really like talking with my mouth completely full.
うん I don't know if it's just where I'm so hungry or what, but it, this is a very solid meal so far. Mm. Okay, this is extremely runny. It's not a good idea to open this right now. Wow, that got way hotter than I thought it would. I guess I just kind of forgot about it. Set it. I don't know where I could set it to cool down. Very, very hot. Set it on the window over here, maybe. Get out the regular cheese spread. Why not? I don't think the cheese spread, I don't think it's really going to benefit a whole lot here, this meal, from cheese. But uh, I'll try some on it anyway. The other cheese spread is literally almost as thin as water right now where it's so hot. So, really don't want to open it and get it all over the place and it be this weird runny mess. Now that looks good. Get a bite of the... Uh, chicken stew and beans here and Mexican style I don't know how Mexican style it is but uh, I mean a little bit I guess because of the corn and the peppers I don't know why they consider it Mexican style but I'll try these together I mean, that would be great if you was trying to change it up. This. The, tree, the cheese spread is alright. I mean, it's good on just the cracker. That's probably how I'll eat it. Just on its own. I'll try it on this, this cornbread, too. I've seen plenty of people do it just doesn't strike my fancy to have cheesy cornbread but hey why not one time all right here we go hmm uh, you know what? That's not bad. Kind of the, it kind of cuts the sweetness, the richness of the cheese. How it's kind of it's got a little bit sharp, you know, not real, not very sharp, but it's very cheesy, and it it actually mixes all right with that corn flavor and the sweetness of the cake. The well, it's it's basically like a pound cake, corn flavored pound cake. it's all right for like a novelty bite or two i wouldn't eat very much of it that way but yeah it's not bad not bad at all rinse it down with some of this pink lemonade i think it's is it mixed up yeah i think it's all mixed up I might have put too much uh, water in it. Slightly sour from the lemon. Pick up. Uh, it's not very sweet. 
Yeah, I put too much water in that. Had to have. Not by much, though. I mean, I might have put like 14, 13, 14 ounces in it. I think it'd be better off like 10, 9, 10 ounces. <clears throat> it's cornbread woomy. Cornbread woomy. Yummy. <laughs> Uh, ever try the snack crackers that are cheddar flavored? Ever try the snack crackers that are cheddar flavored? Uh, you mean like Cheez-Its? Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> Cheez-Its are great. Smitty, how are you holding up with the, uh, weather up there? Final meal for life would have to, uh, John Wayne Gacy. Sorry, that's a great last meal. I can't remember what he had. Did he have KFC? What did he have? I was watching that uh, Death Row guys last meals thing there a couple weeks ago. Probably I watched that. All right, let's uh, let's try out one of these. Now yeah, let's. I'll try the. I just yeah. <laughs> I don't want to eat all my raisins in one bite. Some of these sunflower seeds off the bottom there. Excuse me. There we go. That's a bit. Oh. Not everything. Got an almond here. There we go. That's a mix of everything. Okay, what I would say about this is they need to ditch the sunflower seeds and put a few extra peanuts in, in place of those sunflower seeds because the sunflower seeds give off this oily, almost like chemical flavor that I don't personally like. I mean, I like sunflower seeds sometimes, but they just overtake this, and that's all I really taste. Even with the raisins, I get a little hit of sweetness from those, but no flavor. So I'd, you know, I'd probably prefer to eat around the sunflower seeds, honestly. All right. Let's try the uh, oatmeal cookie. You can see the oats up in there, though. See that one right there? I thought you could... Typically, you can see more on these little cookies, but let's see. Pretty crunchy. Of course, as you agree with old smoky sunflower seeds, suck if they're not in the shell. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's been a few instances where I would say, oh, the sunflower seeds aren't bad mixed in there. But most of the time, like in this case right here, they, they're, they don't need to be in there. They need to be... They need to go and... Uh, yeah, they don't taste the same when they're not in the shell, for sure. But it's almost like they spray them with some... Well, I don't know. It They just taste... They have a definite chemical essence to them that I could... Def, I, I, I prefer to go without. And, the, and it overpowers the whole flavor of that nut and raisin mix right there. And that's pretty daggone fresh, too. I have had that, like I said, I've had it since July of 2019... Maybe it was 2018. I can't freaking remember when we were there. Maybe it was 2019. It was 2019. Sorry. Yeah, it was. You want real fried chicken? Come and see me. I don't know. It's hard to beat the uh, the colonel. <laughs> the colonel's got his secret recipe that's pretty daggone good. All right. Before I dip this, I'm going to take a, a drink of this four ounces of uh, coffee, I guess. We'll see how it tastes. Huh. 
very, very, very mild. I mean, it's just, there's not much coffee flavor there at all. And I, like I said, I mean, I went with about four ounces of water in that. Because uh, this cup holds maybe 12 ounces brimful. And eight ounces will bring it up to about right there or so. So let's see if dipping this cookie in it does any any good. Okay. Well, that's actually pretty good. Really brought out the the nutmeg and cinnamon flavor in these cookies because before it just wasn't there. It's very, very mild. Dipping it in this coffee is absolutely the way to go. Kind of heats it up a little bit. Softens it up some. Mm. That's a thousand percent the way to eat that. Mm. Forgot about this. New Orleans style hot sauce. Let's see. I wouldn't mind finishing this main. But I don't want to make you guys sit through me eating a whole, a whole meal. Alright, let's see. You like Popeye's shrimp? Popeye's is like, it's okay. Chick-fil-A sandwich. Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. It was kind of like the first spicy chicken sandwich. And it is awesome. They're on sale right now, two for five also. So... <laughs> good deal on those right now all right let's see what's up with this hot sauce let's see if it's even hot all right, here we go the answer to that is no No heat to that whatsoever. While this is still at least warm, kind of got some water separating out on it right there. <sighs> Try to mix it back in a little bit there. By adding the beans, it really does make it like a chicken chili. Yeah, the chicken sandwiches from there are awesome. From Chick-fil-A. The prices at Chick-fil-A, though, in my opinion, are, are too high. Especially if I want a spicy chicken sandwich, I'm going to go to Wendy's. Especially right now for two for five. Which is a good deal great deal actually I think that sandwich is five bucks it's like 489 <laughs> on its own let's uh, I'm gonna try just the hot sauce on its own it's almost like a green I mean it's not green green but it's I don't know it's a weird color let's try it You know, virtually no heat. There is vinegar there. I do taste pepper. It does taste like a uh, like a habanero, I think. Habanero. I think it says it's a uh, picante. 
salsa picante. That's that's it's a picante sauce. That's why. The salsa picante. I mean, I guess it'd be okay to eat with your crackers if you didn't have nothing else. Kind of change it up. The hot sauce is definitely a a valuable option whenever you're you get sick of eating something. You get sick of the flavor. It can be uh, an extremely valuable asset to have. I know, as soon as I go to take that bite, it's going to drip on my beard. It's going to happen. Yeah, not a bad meal. The only thing I didn't go for was the uh, first strike bar, which... This... Is the follow up from this. First Strike Nutritious Energy Bar. Well, they're really, uh, the bars are the same size. Feels like. Let's see. Hold this package. As far as thickness goes, they're the same. And length, they're the same too. So, yeah, they're the same size. They stayed the same size over the years. That is awesome, though. One of the coolest ones I've seen. The early ones that I had were in tan packaging, like this the Hua bars, and had a sticker on them. That said, hoorah. Hoorah! Alright, I think eaten, tried, slash, whatever, everything now. Time to look at the chat, finish some drinks. I mean, I could finish eating this meal without a second thought. Right now. check my messages here uh, it if you're saying it it's hoorah but it says hoorah on here Corey no why just h o o a h hoorah it kind of sounds like the, uh, like a, I don't know, like a New York or Jersey term, if you know what I'm trying to say there. hoo I'm not going to go into details of that, but I think you, you guys get, get my drift there. I am going to finish this, though. Yeah, buddy. Who ya is Navy SEAL. Hoo-yah. Okay. I don't think I've ever heard that. But they do. Different special forces, forces branches do uh, have some of their own terms. But hoorah is pretty much universal throughout the branches that they have used it. Now, it is mainly now used as a marine battle cry but it's used a lot 
in conversation even. Ura is the crown version, the crayon version. These cookies uh, definitely made the coffee ha the coffee have a purpose. That's for sure. I mean, that just doesn't taste like coffee. I don't even know what it tastes like. I mean, there's a very slight coffee taste there. I mean, you really got to look for it, though. I don't know. We got to get going. Time to get the anniversary party started. Really? We got an anniversary party tonight? Sunshine Side of Life said, Smokey, yeah. You having that drink? What? Are you having a beer tonight, Smokey? Uh, Corey, I hadn't planned on it. I do have three boxes of vintage beers. Or, I actually don't know what they are. They could be sodas. I'd say they're mainly going to be beers. I don't know for sure, though. I can't say 100%. But uh, I have three boxes of uh, beers that Gabriella sent me uh, that he didn't want. So, he stopped drinking anything that's in a steel can. And uh, he says he feels better because of it, because that he he drinks a lot of them. He drinks at least two two of those a week, and it's not like he's drinking fresh uh, beer out of a steel can, you know, like it would have been when it was fresh and new. This is beers that have been sitting in a can for 30, 40, 50, 60, Well, I don't even think thirty, forty, fifty, sixty years, and. The linings of the cans have eaten away, maybe sometimes even gotten down to the metal. Some of these cans were leaded together, and there's lead in them. So uh, he said he definitely feels better now that he stopped drinking the the, uh, the steel cans, and he passed them all along to me to drink. So I'll just, I have to space them way out, or I, I, I think that's probably the best route to go there with that, without uh, doing too much damage. Anybody who stops by, hit that thumbs up or down. Either way, either way, up or down. I didn't make very many posts today. I think I only made the one. Probably a mistake on my part. Definitely had a lot less traffic this week than uh, previous weeks. Got the holidays coming up. Well, Thanksgiving's already over. But Merry Christmas to all you guys. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever it is you celebrate, happy to you. Do your thing. Uh... Anybody who says they're offended by someone saying happy or Merry Christmas, I feel sorry for that person. Um, if you don't celebrate Christmas, that's fine. But uh, it's always been and always will be a widely celebrated holiday here in the States. And uh, I think, you, you know, people being offended by someone saying Merry Christmas when they're actually trying to do a nice thing and be nice and kind and say, oh yeah, Kwanzaa, happy Kwanzaa. That's right. Forgot about that one for some reason. That's usually a usually one I pick up after Hanukkah. But uh, yeah, it's okay to say Merry Christmas, man. It's okay to say that. It's okay to say Happy Hanukkah. It's okay to say Happy Kwanzaa. It's okay. Everybody's got to quit being so PC and and butt hurt all the time over nothing. Literally nothing. Huh. <laughs> Look at this. So I opened the thing at M&M's a while back. And I kept this little thing. And every time I look at it, I think it's a little chicken. <laughs> a little chick. It, it, that's what it looks like. It looks like it's got a little beak, a little eye, the shape. Ain't that weird?
it's okay. Don't be butt hurt over nothing. I, I agree. Everybody gets butt hurt over it. <laughs> everything. You see it every day. And usually, typically, obviously, the news has always been this way. They only they only report the negative things. They don't report the positive things, and they never will. So, you know, one out of twenty or one out of a hundred stories that they report might be something positive. Usually, so yeah, it does look like a peep kind of. That's why, that's why I kept the stupid thing. I know it's just an M and M. I know it's weird, but uh, <laughs> I, I just. I kept it for that reason because I was like, eh, you know, that thing looks like something else. And I, I don't know. Never had an Eminem look like that. Every time I look at it, it's up on my shelf. Staring at me like that right there. I don't know how long it'll survive. Without me, like, really putting it up somewhere. Because it's just sitting on the shelf. It could fall down and break. Easily. It's already got a crack all the way around it. It definitely does have a... a have that little rubber ducky look to it. And that, that's the whole reason why I kept it in the first place. Even eating that... Nut and raisin mix on its own like that without the sun. I picked around the sunflower seeds. They have infused their flavoring into the raisins for sure. And it may be even oils from them or something that's on the peanuts and, and the almonds because it still tastes like it even though I've eat, I've, I'm eating around them. Try just the raisins on their own. Um. Yep. I can even taste it if I eat just the raisins. So, the sunflower seeds have infected that entire package with their flavor. A mini yellow rubber ducky, yeah. Keep things that remind you of how random life is, Smokey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, it's weird because... I am a, uh, I'm a, I'm a person that does, I guess I notice, the, I say it's the universe, I don't know what you, you know, I, that's what I call it, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell you my theory on this, but I have been in certain places at certain times and had things happen that make me kind of, kind of take a step back and say, this is the universe telling me that I'm where I'm supposed to be, when I'm supposed to be there, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'll give you a good for instance of that. It's very, it's very weird. Uh, well, it's not. I mean, I, I've, I could come up with a hundred of these, and that, and I think that's a good thing. That means that I've, I've stayed on a pretty consistent path. I think. But whenever we were filming the show, eating history, we were traveling across the country, and we went to. Uh, I think we were in California, and when we got there, Matt, Matt, <clears throat> so Matt Braley is the showrunner, he's the guy that came up with Pawn Stars, he's the guy that ran our show, and he was traveling with us on this run, and he was driving, well before we, like, before we got there, when, before we flew in, he had called and made reservations for us to go eat somewhere, well while, by the time we finally got there, got to the hotel, got our bags into our rooms, and was able to go eat, that place was going to be closed. And it, this was like, it was like 9 o'clock. So, he just, I guess he just looked through his phone and picked the, the closest, most random place where we could actually sit down and have a meal. This would have been back in like, either November of last year, or January of this year. Somewhere along in there. Anyway, so he just picks a random place out of his phone that had decent reviews. He didn't read up anything about it. I was sitting right there when he'd done it. So we go to this place, and we go in and sit down, and they have two entire rooms 
that are full of vintage beer cans. Like, that, the walls were completely full of these vintage beer cans. Uh, some of them uh, sealed and some of them open. I think they were mainly all sealed. <clears throat> so, that's... I, I told Matt then, I was like, Matt, like, this is the universe telling us that we're where we're supposed to be, when we're supposed to be here, doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. And uh, he's like, ah, that's weird, man. That's, that's, that's a cool way of looking at it. I was like, yeah, I know. It, it just seems like we're where we're supposed to be. And we were actually filming that 1943, I think it was, uh, that 1943 beer that I drank that turned to green. Was, that was a freaking weird situation right there. Um, but that, that was actually in Arizona, I think. I don't know. It all kind of mixes together. Maybe we were in Arizona. Maybe we flew into Arizona. That's probably what it was. But uh, Or maybe it was California. I can't remember. I think we drove. I, I don't know. But point is, <laughs> you know, last night I was watching. Uh, what was I watching? <gasps> oh, I was watching Tim Pool. That's what it was. I was watching Tim Pool. We had Alex Jones on and a couple other guys. And about, and I didn't watch the whole thing. You know, I, I clicked on it, and they were already way into it. They were doing a live stream. They were already way into it. And Alex Jones and Tim were talking about exactly what I'm talking about right now. They were talking about, like, the signs of the universe. And you, you got to be willing to pay attention to that stuff. If you, if you don't pay attention to it, you'll never, you'll never have a clue what I'm talking about. If you're not open to th those types of things, or open to, uh, I guess, really, it's open to you're opening it for interpretation by your own account of what's going on. <clears throat> uh, you, you know, you you won't understand what I'm talking about if you if you can't. Uh... Sorry, I got distracted. Tried asking my dad if I could remember the name of the chicken joint back in Norristown, but we couldn't come up with it. Yeah, life is random, and that's a beautiful thing. Life is random. You're, you are correct. Um, and, and it's weird whenever you end up doing something random that ends up having these weird coincidences maybe or familiar things that you know, you'd know you never expect. And that's really what makes you pick up on like, oh, wow, well, this is this is weird, but it's it seems right. Uh, oh, I love the Superman cup. It, this is a nice cup, actually. Got the Superman one here that I use all the time. I, I have three cups that I keep on standby right here that I use. I wash them every time I use them, obviously. <laughs> but I shine them up. Make sure they ain't got no spots on them for the camera. Um, you know, like I, they're they're perfect every time I use them. Um, I got that one. I've got the Gremlins one from what 1984, I think. 84. Let me look here. Does not say. Anyways, there's the Gremlins one. They don't obey the rules. <laughs> and then I also have the... Uh, what's the other one? Oh, yeah. The Pink Floyd, The Wall. All in all, we're just another brick in the wall. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I was reading back through the chat there for a while. Uh, I'd love to see that. You're right. Um, I'm. A, you're right. I'm a spiritual person. I know. You know what you mean. Tell it like it is. Oh, that's a cool name. Okay, tell it like it is. Eighty six. So uh, you know, some people, like I said, some people think I'm just being stupid, and uh, I'm being too sentimental, or I'm being, you know, cringe. And then some people also some people understand. Um, the Gremlin Cup's amazing. Uh, Love me some Pink Floyd too. Yeah, I think all three of these cups are pretty killer. Uh, it's not easy to find these cups. I, I mean, you can go on eBay and buy probably just about anything you'd want. But actually finding them in person somewhere at random, which is where these came from. I didn't like buy these specifically off the internet or anything. These are just ones that I randomly came across. And I was always into the Superman logo thing. Like, I always thought that was cool. I used to have them on my car, along with Hot Wheels stickers, like, that made my car kind of look like a Hot Wheels. 
I collected Hot Wheels for many years. That's why I had those stickers on my car. I think I have probably roughly 5,500 to 6,000 Hot Wheels in my collection now. What am I singing? Oh, <laughs> Pink Floyd. Now nah, I'm good. <laughs> I ain't got no music. Ain't. Ain't, ain't a word because my teacher said it ain't. Ain't is a word now, right? It's in the dictionary. I'm willing to bet it is. I bet ain't is a word now. I remember that getting in trouble for saying ain't when I was in school. And I never did stop saying it. I still say it. I type it. <laughs> I type it. I say it. I use it. Oh, Miss Marilyn says, yep. It's it's in the dictionary now. I figured it would be. Yeah, but that used to be the saying when I was growing up. Because uh, it, it was, ain't, ain't a word. Because my teacher said it ain't. But the teacher would say it. <laughs> you know, it was uh, always a thing. Oh, man, I'm stopped up. Something awful. You know, I forgot about having this... Uh, what is this, a granola? No, a cornflakes bar. I'm going to be having one of these, uh, got three of these Paul Malls left. Well, I'm going to have two left after this. And, uh, you know, these, these filtered, th these were not military. And they're filtered. They are from the 70s, so they are aged, but they, they weren't sealed up. And honestly, like the Marlboros, too, they're okay. They're not a horrible cigarette, but the non-filtered cigarettes that are aged taste so much better. Um, I guess I could just cut the filter off of these. That, that'd, be a, that'd be a fix, maybe. Never tried that. He's my lighter came in, got me. It's got very few lights left in it. It's, uh, is that lit? There it is. It's still lighting, but it's just barely, barely lighting. It's got to get, I mean, I can refill it, obviously. Vegas. Make sure I didn't, uh, miss something here. Okay. Anyways, what I was saying earlier about, because uh, Matt just texted me, the uh, Matt from the, the TV show, the showrunner. So he's basically the head producer, director, whatever you wanted to call him. But he just actually texted me, and I just texted him back. That's why I was silent for a second and told him, I was telling everybody the story about us when we went into that old, uh, oh, uh, the, the, the restaurant with the old beer cans. And... That happened like, I want to say four times. It wasn't exactly that situation, obviously, but there was 
there was like weird things that happened like four or five different times throughout filming the show that I was with Matt or I was with Josh and I was like I noticed some things lining up like the stars lining up whatever you want to call it well I was like this is where we're supposed to be you know right now it's where we're supposed to be uh wait what maybe I'll have to try the next one I find in the stash it doesn't look half bad uh No, this is actually a USMRE. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Hang on, let me go back. Um, I think... Oh, you mean some fresh Canadian smokes? So, Smitty. I think Smitty. Or was it Trucker? It was either Smitty or Trucker. I can't remember which one. They sent me these... Uh, I think they were called like... Something A's. Something A's. They were Canadian cigarettes. There was like... I think there was 25 in the pack, but they were like extra short and even extra skinny. They were skinnier, they were shorter. So maybe there was more than 25 in a pack. It was a bunch. And he sent me a pack of those and he told me how much they cost in Canada. And I think it was like $20 for a pack of smokes in Canada. Um, and man, they were those are some of the strongest cigarettes I have ever smoked in my entire life. And I'm not joking. Uh, that even stronger than any aged tobacco I've had outside of maybe a, like a Chesterfield or, uh, and it's not all Chesterfields, but like there's been a couple Chesterfields that I've had that have rocked my world. <clears throat> like right now, like this is, I, I, I get a little bit of that lightheadedness right now, but the filter on these things really prevents me from getting that, that, uh, that kind of head buzz thing going on that I would have if it was a non-filter where I ain't smoking. Somebody asked on a scale of 1 to 10 how good was it tonight? This meal? The Mexican chicken stew with the beans, the cornbread, the crackers. Nah, this. But overall I would give this meal a I would say a solid 7.5 to 8 out of 10 roughly is pretty daggone good not the greatest i've ever had not by far the worst i've ever had and uh quite a bit above mediocre uh if you're a chili lover if you like chili then you would like the way these two mix together like i said those beans basically taste like chili without meat then you add in over the chili because this is a tomato base stew anyway so that tomato base mixes real well with that so yeah i would say it's a solid you know between seven and eight seven you know seven and a half or so pretty daggone good i kind of mixed a mexican style chicken stew with some mre star stuff up here from the uh, beef stew that I opened up that salty crop collectibles gave me in person back a year and a half or so ago well a year and a half is it been yeah been, been roughly a year and a half maybe longer i can't remember Jeez, how long i i don't remember when the meetup was was it in when was the meetup i'd have to go back and check my my live stream from that to, to find out the exact the actual date that it was. Uh, just reading back through some chat. That's one of those menus I'd try to either sell or trade away. Never liked the sound of Mexican chicken stew. Uh, Daniel, yeah, dude, I'd actually say go for it, give it a try. Uh, the only thing I can say a big difference wise here though is your your military version is going to have rice in it I think it might even have that uh, Santa Fe style rice I can't remember but it's probably going to have probably long grain white rice it's not going to have the beans which the beans really added a lot to this a lot I, when I first saw it I was like yeah that's kind of stupid I'd much rather have rice with this I was wrong. 
I was wrong. The rice is good, though. The rice is good with it because the stew kind of soaks into the rice and really makes it like this thick uh, rice dish, more or less. The beans, on the other hand, now they do change that up on occasion. That you may not get rice with it. It just depends on what year MRE you have. Easy way to do that is to just check MREinfo.com, though, on the MRE menus list to see what you're going to have. If you're going to have rice or whatever. I don't know that I've paid that much attention to the packs on Trailer Park Boys. The pack that Smitty gave me, which I still have put up somewhere, I think I have one. I kept one cigarette left in it, just like as an emergency smoke. Um, I can't remember that brand name. Something A's, though. Any Canadians in the chat can tell me what brand those are that I'm thinking of. Import A's, maybe. That's what it was. Import A's, I think is what they were called. But the, the pack had like this tri-cut on the corner. <laughs> I know it's silly. to It doesn't really make that much of a difference. But uh, I have some other foreign packs up there on my shelves that I haven't opened up. I got a couple packs that Delicious sent me. I got a pack that Mickey Joe sent me that was the worst cigarette he ever had from China. Or not China, from Japan, sorry. Uh, any Chinese... I've been thinking about making a really crazy Chinese video. I'm really not a fan of China right now. I never, well, I guess I never really have been. But, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of seeing things in my house that say made in China on them. Sorry. No offense to anybody out there. It's just a personal thing. Always have dinner, lovely artwork. What? Always have dinner, lovely artwork. I honestly don't think the Canadians had cigarettes in the uh, in their own piece. Yeah, Corey, no, I don't think so. I, I don't, well, I can't say that some of their World War II era stuff and maybe Korean War era stuff might have had cigarettes in it. I doubt it. But and then again, I don't know because I haven't really seen rations, regular rations, regular daily rations from back then. We've seen... Emergency rations, uh, lifeboat life draft rations, or uh, pilot survival rations, or I mean, I've got quite a few of them myself, but I have not seen the daily rations from uh, the Canadians from those eras to, to say. I would say they probably did have smokes. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Trailer Park Boys. I have been for many, many, many years. Uh, I've, I've probably started watching Trailer Park Boys 10 years ago at least. I would say 10 years ago. Yeah. Can't remember what I used to watch it on. What what channel Trailer Park Boys used to be on back in the day. That got garbled for the first time? What? Sigs in Canada have awful pictures of them. Oh, okay, cool. So they did have Sigs in rations back in the day, it sounds like. I uh, told Smokey how he would rate this meal tonight. Uh, I did answer that, so, yep. But yeah, I think uh, I think the the Canadians probably took cigarettes out <laughs> before the Americans. I could be wrong about that, but I think they did. Oh yeah.
Okay. Wow. That got quiet for a minute. Phew. I got really sidetracked there. I think that cigarette messed with my head. I don't know if there's like some of this drink mix that didn't dissolve or what. Because it just doesn't taste right. I ain't sticking that spoon in it. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this. Hopefully if there is some in there, it'll mix it up. Maybe it'll taste a little better. Nope. That's not it. I think I'm pretty much done. Oh, we'll wait. Here. I do have this. This is... MRE meetup was August 2019. Wow. Really? So it's been, uh, what, a, a year? and August, what? August, September, October, November, December. That's five months. So it's been a year and five months, basically. I'm just like, call it a year and a half, pretty much. Man, a lot's changed in the last year and a half. Holy crap. When we were at the meetup, I didn't know anything really about the TV show well I a little bit and I didn't know I was going to be doing it <laughs> that's one thing I can say so 8159 I don't think this is a 2018 I really don't unless I got this off of Drew back in 2018 that's possible that that could be yeah that's probably where this came from he got a big batch of cornflake cereal bars so I'll, I'll bet this didn't come out of a food packet survival general purpose i bet i actually got this loose i could be wrong about that but uh it's been so long since i had one of these just kind of looking forward to it uh we got it from bob what is it ration dylan is one of my favorite comedians ever dylan moran not sure super cool dude very down to earth sort of celebrity murray you met up was august uh i thought my connection went out yeah uh some comedy gold out there or out of ireland too hardy bucks absolutely hilarious one of the main guys uh martin Maho Mal Mal maloney martin maloney i'm sure I'd, i've heard him before it's super interactive with the fans and made me a mod on his live streams oh that's cool I'm not sure I'm not I'm not sure that I'm familiar with him I might be though all right here we go can't believe I'm opening this thing right now these things will last forever so they're great great survival food to keep around Ugh. but it's been so long since I had one of these that uh, you know what I just want to eat one this is the Corn Flakes Cereal Bar that is in the Food Packet Survival General Purpose. That is the only way that you can get one of these now. These were in uh, Long Range Patrols up until 1998. They were in the Ration Cold Weathers, obviously. But uh, that was the last time I knew them to be in any type of daily ration. Now, the only place to get them, they still do make them, and they are in the Food Packet Survival General Purpose, and I think this is probably the fresh one, freshest one I've ever had, so here we go. Mm. Made a mess with it. weird so I taste a little bit of salt what's the sodium in here wow look at that 270 milligrams so this is I mean this is a survival bar 17% is 11 grams of fat 230 calories in this little tiny bar I mean, it definitely tastes like cornflakes, though. This is by far the freshest one I've ever had. It's not hard. 
not super crunchy. Uh, just kind of falls apart. It's kind of buttery. Lightly sweet. It's got a really nice aftertaste. 8 grams of sugar. 4 grams of protein. and not a much, That's a decent little amount of protein for such a tiny bar, I would say. I would suggest if you can find these anywhere, like I did whenever I found uh, Drew get these. Drew got these. I think he had to order, I don't know. There, it, he got hundreds, maybe even a thousand of these. I can't remember. It was a bunch. And he had to do that just to get an order of them because they're so hard to get. But if you do come across some and you can get your hands on them, I would suggest getting some putting them up long-term food storage stock these are absolutely awesome for that because they taste awesome and they they you know they're packed with all the you know they got a decent amount of sodium in it which you're going to need they got a decent amount of fat in them calories so this thing right here could constitute a meal in a survival situation without a doubt and it's also pretty diverse you know you can add a, a little bit of water to it and uh, have yourself a little bit of a gruel if you got sick of eating it uh, the crunchy way. So yeah, it's kind of, those things are awesome. Again, though, I think the shortbread's my favorite. Didn't used to be. Used to be my favorite one of those bars was the granola. The granola was my favorite for years. And then I don't know what kind of changed about that. I don't know what made me change my thoughts on it, but... Uh, now I would I would say that the shortbread is my favorite because uh, they're just so buttery <laughs> and sugary. They're just they're really really good. My chat's not working, guys. By the way, uh, you got a loose one from a dude who used to be on MRE. Who oh, was? But yeah, yeah, no, that's Drew. Yeah, Daniel, you're you're talking about the same guy that you would have the same batch uh, as these right here. Uh, I, I can't remember how many of these I got off, I bought off of him. I think I bought like 10 or 15. I gave away most of them though, so I doubt I, that might be the last one of those that I have of the fresh ones like that. Uh, the food packet survival general purposes are absolutely awesome to have around as a survival food that you can keep in your car or anywhere like that. Little tiny box packed with tons and tons of calories. To survive on you got your drink mixes that you there's teas in there there's beef bouillon in there or chicken bouillon sorry um a pack of mints and maybe you i don't know never mind there's no gum but a pack of mints in there for after your <laughs> your dinner i guess you'd call it your daily your entire day's worth of food if you had to make it stretch a whole day you could i guess get by with that but keeping food packet survival general purposes around or something that I'd like, if I find them that are affordable, I buy them and put them up in places where, uh, and I have done this quite a bit, places where I can, uh, just as stock, if it was to ever need them. I'm not a class, I'm not a prepper, I'm just not, I never have been. I think I'm just well prepared. <laughs> I have a bunch of stuff. That uh, if something was to ever happen that I needed it, I would have it. So, uh, yeah. But alright guys, I'm going to wrap this up. 
so I can go finish this. What I'm probably going to do here is scoop all this over into one of those, like a little uh, ceramic bowl and put my beans and my chicken stew together. I'll probably just, I'm just going to mix it all together, microwave that, and finish it with my crackers and my cornbread and my... Uh, probably the jalapeno cheese spread, but oh yeah, it's solid again. Well, not solid, but it's not like water like it was. Because <laughs> it was so, so, so thin that it felt like the consistency of water. But alright guys, it was awesome opening that box from Salty Croc Collectibles. Don't forget the live stream tomorrow, the Ration Museum live stream at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will be uh, hanging out over there doing his thing. I have no idea what Sean's got planned, but it's always a good time over there talking in the chat and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, let's break that number 30 so I can do a giveaway over there and uh, break 40 so I can do another one. Break 50 so I can do another one. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate each and every one of you guys coming tonight, hanging out. Sorry, I'm all stopped up and uh, I sound like I'm talking through my nose because I am. <laughs> Thanks to everybody who sent in a super chat, which would be History Savior, CT, Alandal, uh, Cyanide Cookies, and which is Dan, Jacob Hallenberger. Thanks all you guys for sending the uh, super chats over. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, wrapping this one up for this week. I may be in New York next week. If uh, if if I happen to be there, I will probably do a live stream from New York, unless I have to travel out on Saturday or something like that, which I, I don't know yet. I don't know exactly what the plan is yet, so uh, we'll see. But yeah, I definitely would, would look forward to seeing you guys on the live stream there with Sean. There's a link to that in the very top of the description of this video once it uploads. It's in there right now, but once this uploads, it'll be there. And uh, again, thanks to Salty Croc for sending all this stuff. It's uh, also him that gave me that MRE Star meal. So huge thanks to him. And uh, all right, guys. Really appreciate you guys. And uh, I guess really all I got left to do is say thank you guys for watching. And I'll see y'all on the next live stream. Later. <laughs>